Welcome back to the Jatai Academy. Today we're going to be doing some long layers for men specifically. And we have a little inspiration photo here. This guy, Jack Greystone, he's got like awesome hair. And this is the inspiration pick that we're going for. So you can see the shape is solid. It's got a little bit of layering throughout, mostly on the center of the top. And we're going to start by cutting our perimeter shape. I'm going to use my Tokyo scissors from Jatai. And we're going to be point cutting. Now by point cutting, it's going to give me a solid shape, but it's just going to keep the very tips of it separated and allow them to kind of flick out. And especially on curly hair, I think that point cutting really helps a lot. Now as I'm cutting these sections here, you're going to notice that I'm rolling my fingers towards me and I'm rolling them up slightly. So by slightly rolling my fingers up, what that's going to do when I cut it is going to cut the top of the layer or the section slightly shorter than the underneath layer of the section. And by doing that, it's going to give me a more randomness and more kind of, uh, of, it's going to introduce more movement than just holding it down and cutting it completely blunt. And sometimes wavy curly hair needs that encouragement to kind of separate and not just stack. Now here as I'm working up the back of the head, I'll start the section in the middle and then I'll cut towards one side and cut towards the other side to try to keep it relatively even and keep everything nice and solid in my shape that I'm building. Point cutting across here, trying not to cut myself. And we're doing a pretty good job so far. Now, to build my perimeter shape, the first section that I took was a, a center part from the uh, front of the head to the back of the head, and then from the mastoid to the occipital bone. That's going to give me my baseline. Then I'm going to take the drop crown to the top of the ear as my second section, and now I'm just going to comb everything else straight down and natural fall and use the guide length that I cut originally as my length for the rest of it. and Just cut everything nice and even all the way around, trying to maintain the same level of curve with my fingers, that little bit of flip that I'm doing. I want to try to keep that as consistent as possible throughout the entirety of the haircut for my perimeter shape. Making sure I'm combing everything clean from the roots all the way to the ends. Now we're getting uh, everything done here. We're on the final side here, trying to match it to the other side and just being patient and going back and forth as I need to to make sure that the sides are cut evenly. If you're not already following us on YouTube, please click the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up and a like, and click the notification bell to be notified of any future content that we have. Now we're going to go through and start our layering. And I'm going to start with a center section straight down from the front of the head all the way down to the nape. And I want to keep this mohawk section right in the middle of the head, regardless of where they part it, because I'm cutting this haircut very, very neutral. So I'm going to take my first section right in the center, right around the front, and I want to determine where I want to cut that length. And I'll do that by holding that hair down towards the face. And it gives me a pretty good idea where the hair is going to fall after I layer it. And then I'll hold that straight up at 90 degrees. And then I'll cut my line across. I'll go through and point cut this to keep the textures the same as the point cut that I did underneath. And then I'll, after I finish the first section, I'll take a small piece as my guide and work that all the way back through down to the occipital bone. Now, once I hit the crown, I'm going to start increasing the length, which means that the line is going to get longer away from the head and it's not going to curve completely head shape. It's going to get longer towards the back of the head, towards the nape. I'm pulling everything into the center of the head and just taking a small piece of my previous guide, holding that out, and then cutting it all the way down to my perimeter length. So I want to keep the layering fuller in the back, more layered around the front. So that's why I'm having a shorter length in the front and exaggerating that line as I go towards the back of the head. 
Now I'll take a parallel section to the Mohawk section that I took initially. So the next section that I take is going to be exactly the same, parallel to the previous section. And now I'm going to hold this, both of these sections, my previously cut guide, which you can see there, and my new hair is being held back into the center of the head. Everything on this haircut is going to be held in the center, and I want to keep it methodical with my elevations because I want everything held as close to 90 as possible. If I need to increase the length, then I'll change my finger angle. I won't change my elevation. If I change the elevation, that's going to change the amount of weight that my layering is going to have in it. And with inconsistent elevation, I'm going to have inconsistent weight distribution. So I want to make sure everything is held as 90 as I can get. And as I work from the front to the back, I just take section and section and section using the front and my previously cut sections as my guides. Coming through to the third section on the right side, or, or our right, but the model's left. And we're going to comb that back into the center again. Comb everything straight up. There's my guide. Cut that all the way through and back. Please follow us on social at Jatai Feather. We've got Facebook, we've got Instagram, Twitter, even have a Pinterest page. So please check it out. There's a lot of really good content on there as well. Continuing with my next section as I work towards the nape of the head, following my previously cut guides for length and for elevation. Increasing my length as I get down to the bottom of the nape, as you can see the length's getting longer there. Now here on the last section, I'm gonna follow the same patterns that I was doing before. Comb everything into the center of the head, Whatever the length is, I'm going to cut off. Now, at this point, if I cut the layering too short on the top, I'm going to cut into my perimeter shape here. So I want to be mindful that I'm not cutting it and layering it so short on the top that by the time I get to the perimeter around the side that I'm cutting into it. There shouldn't be a whole lot of hair to cut as I get to the flat parts of the head around the hairlines because the hairlines are my perimeter shape and my perimeter length. Up into the center, not a whole lot to cut, perfect. We do the same thing on the other side, and now we're gonna go through and start our face framing. And the reason I'm gonna go through and do some face framing is because when I pull all the hair up and layer it, if I don't go through and clean up this section around the front, it's, it's going to expose the hairline in my layering. So whatever their natural hairline is around the front, it's going to show in my layering because the lengths are going to be different. So I have to go through and clean this up. And it doesn't require a whole lot, but I'm going to take the section in the center as my length, make sure that that's the length I want, and then just follow that down. And I'm combing all the hair straight down in its natural fall. I'm not pulling it forward. By pulling it down like this, I can keep my shape nice and clean and only clean up what little bits that the hairline is throwing off. And I don't have to relayer the whole thing. I'm just cleaning up little bits. You'll see a little point there, and then you'll see a little bit of gap where the hairline starts to curve back towards the back of the head, right through there, nothing to cut. So now we're gonna go down just on the very bottom there. After I cut the initial shape around the front and just clean that up, I just comb everything else down and make sure that it doesn't hang over my previously cut sections and my layering around the front. looking pretty good. Now we're going to go through and put a little bit of curl cream. Any brand that you like. I like a little something that's got not too sticky, but something that helps smooth it out. I'm going to go through and work this through as evenly as I can. Most product does not spread through the hair very easily, so I want to brush everything through and get that product on as evenly as possible. And then I'm going to go through and subsection and take little tendrils where the hair wants to separate and then just spiral twist it. 
and I'm going to go through and do this to every hair on the head. And it's going to seem like it's tedious and it's going to take a while, but it's probably only going to take, I think it took me five minutes to do this. And I'll just do section by section and separate where it wants to separate and help that hair clump together. You're going to find that when individual hairs separate from the clump of the curl, it makes the hair look frizzy, even though the hair is not naturally frizzy. So the curl cream helps it clump together. Me twisting it helps it form into a cable curl that I like. And here's our end result. And I'm going to let that air dry for our final result. And I think it looks pretty good. Layering looks good. We took it out of the center and around the front. Be sure to check out the Jatai Academy. There's all kinds of great content on there. Please also leave us a comment with what you'd like to see in the future. We'll see you next time.